Okay, friends, let's take a look at linear dependence versus independence for functions. So I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to make f of x equal 2x. Why am I doing this? Because I feel like it. I can call whatever, I can make up whatever function I want. This is a basic function. g of x equals, for example, sine x. Something very specific happens when you divide them. So f of x divided by g of x. Look what happens. You're going to have x over sine x. The fact I'm dividing f by g means nothing. I can just as well do g of x over f of x. That would be sine of x over x this way. See? Either way, the point is that this is a variable ratio. It changes depending on the value of x you input. Again, this is also a variable ratio that depends on the value of x you input. Let's visualize this thus far. So graph, let's see, sine x, that's that curve. Graph x, that's the green curve. Now graph the ratio between them, sine x over x. And look at the red curve very carefully, right? Red curve is the ratio, it changes, right, versus x. It's not a constant quantity. The value of x that you input changes the ratio of sine x to x. When you have this kind of situation occur, the conclusion is that uh, sine x and x are linearly independent. So we just write li when they have a non-constant ratio between them. In other words, another way to think about it is as an example, like sine x cannot be written as a constant multiple of x. So sine of x is not equal to a constant multiple a of x. So what I mean is, you can check, but like sine of x is definitely not just 2 times x. Nope. Okay, sine of x is not equal to 10x. It's not. So in general, sine of x is not equal to a times x. So this is uh, comparing x, called an algebraic function, and sine x, which is a trigonometric function. You can extend this to other kinds of functions easily. Let's look at a case of linear dependence, LD. So f of x is, as an example, sine x. And then g of x, as an example, is equal to 2 sine x. Just to keep it really simple, understandable, hopefully. If you take g of x over f of x, you get 2 sine x over sine x. But the sine x functions cancel except when both are, you know, like when you have a zero in the bottom, but it's not dwell on that. And you have a two. This is a constant value, correct? So it's different this time. Here, sine x over x, this is a variable ratio. This is a constant value. What I mean is it's a constant ratio between them that doesn't change. So look at the difference in the graphs that emerge during this process when you have that. So you're going to have here, let's see, two sine x, over sine x this way look it's a constant ratio so let's input the original functions for a second okay input 2 sine x that's the green curve input sine x that's the red curve when you divide one by the other you always get this constant ratio right this is a 2 sine x over sine x always equal to 2 so for that reason, you can say that 2 sine x and sine x are what we say linear, linearly dependent. The other way to think about it is that basically in this case, like g of x is just 2 times sine x, okay? Which is then just really f of x in the first place. The way I defined f of x appeared to be sine x, you see? This is 2, a constant between them. It's not another function a variable like x or whatever it's just or x squared it's just two constant value in other words visually whatever the value of x is this is one that's the along the red graph that's sine and then the other value there is just twice as big you see this it doesn't matter where you are it's always like that whatever the y value is there here the y value is twice as big and then whatever the value here is at that value of x that you input, then that's just twice as big, which is going this way, going down instead of up. So it's always a ratio of two between them. So these are linearly dependent, whereas here, when you graph this, you see they're linearly independent.
these are some visual insights into these concepts. Leave a like if it's helpful.